Hi and welcome back to another card making video. Today I'm showcasing the February card kit by Simon's Stamp. First let's take a quick look on what's included and then I'm going to share some inspiration. So you will get one of those tape rolls. This is a little stamp set that will give you many many sentiments to play with. Love the font. This is called Simply Thank You. But it's not the only stamp set included in the kit. You will get this huge one. This is called Orchid Rose Bouquet. It gives you this huge flower composition. You can have fun coloring it, but you can also emboss it and have just the design on a colored cardstock for a quicker card. And again, you get many sentiments on this big stamp set as well. Now here are some embellishments. These are little locks as well as keys from the Tim Holtz Ideology Collection. I'm really happy I got this one. I didn't have it in my collection and it's perfect for my mixed media projects. Then you get two envelopes in those two matching colors with the papers that are included. Here is some pink glitter cardstock and let's go through the pattern papers which are the ones that I usually work with for these type of videos. I like to show you ideas on how you can play with them. They are really easy to work with this time since you do get many big focal points as well as busy backgrounds and two pages with those 3x2 cards. Just like always, you will get your lollipop in the kit, but also you get a die that cuts out Miss You, lovely sentiment that gives you the outline as well, and finally your cardstock. And of course, let's not forget that bag that comes in the kit to keep everything nice and tidy. Now, I have shared in previous videos where I work with pattern paper, how you can play with busy backgrounds, how you can play with focal points by cutting them out, and today I'm going to share my number one recipe for working with those pattern papers that give you those 2 by 3 cards. And we have two of those pattern papers here. So I'm going to show you my card design and I will repeat the same card design for 5 of those cards. But of course you can end up with 8 of them since you do get 8 of those 2 by 3s. And of course the first step is to just separate all those 2 by 3s. And here is your reminder, don't forget to like the video if you do enjoy it and also leave me a comment. So here is my recipe that works with every one of those 2x3s. I'm going to browse through the rest of the papers and I'm looking for a paper that has a small pattern, that doesn't have big focal points and that matches the colors on my 2x3. Of course matching the colors is super easy since you do work from the same paper pad and someone else did the hard work for you. So I picked this pink one with those black dots and I'm creating a 2x3 panel out of it. If you don't want to cut through those pattern papers, you can definitely go in your stash and look for a solid cardstock that matches the colors on your 2x3s. And of course remember in the kit you do get matching cardstock. So the idea now is to place one on top of the other making sure that they are on an angle. This way you do get some layering, you create kind of a cluster and you get some extra color peeking through from the back. To make it more special add some dimension by using foam tape at the back, stick it on top of an A2 card and then you can add some extra embellishments to make it look more interesting. This is a great opportunity to use some of your scraps in matching colors, like here for example I matched this uh, scrap pet pattern paper with one of the flowers there. And I'm just going to create a tab so that I can embellish those little 2x3s. Now this is a great opportunity for you to use any dies that you have in your stash that create little tags that you can maybe tuck behind those layers and thread some string to add some extra texture. You can use any border dies that you may have and you will see that example in a bit. Or even if you do have tab dies, now is the time to cut out a few and just tuck them in between those layers. You can also die cut a sentiment and stick it on top. That's what I'm going to do with the sentiment that was included in the kit. I'm going to cut out the outline from white cardstock, the actual words from uh, black cardstock, stick one on top of the other. And I can pop it on top of my card again by using foam tape to add some dimension. And of course to finish it off if you like you can add some embellishments like pearls or sequins gems just to add that extra blink. 
Here is a close-up look on this card, it's a very easy design to put together, you can have some cards in no time, plus you get to use your pattern paper. Here are some close-up photos on this card and I'm going to repeat the same process to make a second card and then show you all five of the cards that I created using the same idea. So this time I picked the stripes pattern paper and I'm placing on top the card with the balloons. From my scraps I did find two pattern papers that match the colors of the balloons and I created a couple of tags just like I did for the first card. And you can see here I'm going to use two tabs, you can use as many as you like. And then again I used a border die to cut out this little embellishment and I'm going to stick it on top of my card. Just stick it at the back, tuck it in between the layers, it doesn't really matter as long as you add some extra interest there. Again I'm going to use foam tape at the back, pop it on top of my A2 standard card. I am embellishing it with a few pearls and I'm not going to add an extra sentiment on top of that since I already have one. But you can definitely cut out your own sentiment and cover up what's already written there, just like I did with the first card. Here are some close-up photos on the second card. And by using the same design, the same recipe, I created five cards in total. So here they are all together. You will see close-up photos of all of these cards at the end of the video. One of the most common questions that I get asked is what do I do with all those cards? Of course I don't send all of them or hand them out to friends. Sometimes I create sets and give them as a gift to someone else so they can have some handmade cards on hand to use. That's what I'm going to do with these five cards. I'm going to give each and every one of them an envelope. I don't like to store them in plastic bags. I think they are safe enough as I tag them in those envelopes. But I'm going to create a little box envelope so that I can keep them all together. I'm using my 1 to 3 punch board and I'm starting with a 9 by 9 cardstock. The size of the finished box envelope will be 5 by 6 so it has plenty of room for all 5 of, of those cards along with their envelopes and I'm going to show you how easy it is to use the 1 to 3 punch board. Based on the guidelines you need to align your cardstock at 4 and 1 quarter punch and then score. Since I'm going for a box envelope I need to do both score lines on that right side. I'm taking my time and I haven't sped up the video so you can see the process. So I'm scoring on the other side as well. Again I'm going over those scoring lines one more time. I don't want to have any break on my paper. Then rotate the paper. There are two scoring lines now. I'm working with the one that's on the inside. And I need to make sure that it is aligned with the notch at the top. That's the one I'm talking about. So I didn't measure anything on this step. I just aligned that scoring line with the notch. I'm going to punch and then do the two scoring lines on the right. Once you do it a couple of times you will see that it's super easy and that envelope comes together really quickly. I am repeating the same process, again rotating the paper, aligning the notch with a second scoring line punch and repeat. On the flap of this punch board there are many different measurements that you can work with to create envelopes, boxed envelopes like the one that I'm using here, as well as bows and even boxes. It's a handy little tool that I keep on using to create my custom made envelopes and there are two punches at the top, one of them creates rounded corners which I'm going to use on all four corners of my paper. And then of course all I have to do is to use my bone folder to reinforce those score lines. And I'm going to use double sided tape on this flap here. Just two pieces are enough to put this envelope together. Make sure that you align everything nicely, stick it down and you have a lovely envelope that fits all those cards along with their envelopes inside. You can cut off this corner if you don't like it, I don't mind at all. So here is the little gift that you can hand out to anyone who loves handmade cards. So that was the project for today, I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired. Here are some close-up photos on all the 5 cards that I made using just one card design. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll see you all next time.